that was the route to the 3000 steeplechase final I put the cards on the table and said after those heats that this could be one of the races of the championship and I genuinely believe that's the case it's our penultimate track competition you won't miss anything in the women's triple jump or the men's high jump. Sufayn El Bakali is bidding to add the world title to his Olympic crown. He's been brilliant this season. He's so fast over the 1500. He's gaining a reputation as someone who is so, so difficult to beat. Haile Selassie on the inside, fifth in Tokyo last year, national record holder for Eritrea. Now to El Bakali. Bronze in Doha, silver in London can he complete the collection here and become the first non-Kenyan to hold the Olympic and world titles at the same time well Hardy of France European team championship silver last year Conceslas Capruto, the former Olympic champion the reigning world champion he outdipped Lamacha Gurma by a hundredth of a second in Doha three years ago, it was one of the greatest races we've seen what about the Ethiopian Three times this season, he's gone inside eight minutes. Silver behind Kipruto in Doha. Silver behind El Bacali in Tokyo. Is it his turn for gold? Sabli of India, national record this year. Unheard of for an Indian to run that fast, 8.12. Abraham Kibiwot of Kenya, Commonwealth silver four years ago. Second in the Rome Diamond League in 8.06. He's in form this season. So too is Genet Wali, just off the podium in Tokyo and Doha, and he's a fine 5,000 metre runner. He's got brilliant, brilliant speed endurance. Arce of Spain, Amare, African champion, double in Mauritius over the five and the steeplechase. He's run 8.06 this season. Abdel Wahid of Italy, European under 23 silver in 2017. Martos of Spain, a European finalist. To Hilary Bohr, the former Kenyan proudly flying the flag for the United States in the top eight in Rio, in the top eight in Doha, and the national champion for the United States. A world youth champion, a world youth silver, Leonard Bett on the second from the outside for Kenya, and then Evan Jaeger with a slightly different haircut. This is Jaeger Mark II, a torrid time with injuries, the silver medalist from Rio, and the bronze medalist from London, delighted to be back in form, fit and healthy, and in the final. El Bacali will be the favourite for this one. But if he wins, he might be pushed quite literally every step of the way. Don't take your eyes off this final for a second. The 3,000 steeple chase. I have never heard noise like it on the last 500 metres of the men's 10,000 final. This is a crowd that absolutely loves its distance running and they will be enthralled here, not specifically about Hillary Moore, but because they know, Gail Devers, in this race we are watching the best of the best of the best. The reigning Olympic champion, the former Olympic champion, the man who's finished second on both occasions. Uh, cameraman stuck out on the uh, track there, now just getting out of the way. That's why the field split, but he now moves back on the inside and he won't be making that mistake when they come round at the next time of asking. No, no. Burma has the two silver, so I think that's his motivation to stay. i got to get up there because the last 500 metres I've got to be in contention. And then Wale has that flat speed. So we'll see what happens coming around. It's like very, up there. Yeah, it, that is really good to see him back from injury. And he said making the US team made more to, meant more to him than the Olympic silver because he never thought he'd get back to that level. Martos is leading. It's very tactical in the early stages of this steeplechase. We will come back to this soon, but we've got to get back to the field temporarily. Martos leading, Jaeger second, Kibruto third. Barship going for 235. Oh, so good. It is going to take something phenomenal to stop him securing a hat trick of high jump titles. First time clearances are 24, 27, 30, 33, and 35. He's miles in front at the moment, the first man over. This is what I love about athletic scale. We have to keep dipping in and out here and there. Everywhere you look, 
we are watching the very, very best in the world at the peak of their powers. Now, this race is beginning to play into the hands of Soufane El Bacali. The tall figure from Morocco is the Olympic champion, and he has run an eye-watering 3.31 for the 1,500 metres. You can pour it on from the start, and he'll live with the pace. You can go slow, and he will be the one to wind it up over the last two laps. Everyone who's anyone is right there tracking Martos as Wale just runs wide on the outside, not to take the lead, but just so that he got a clean look at the water jump. You wonder if somebody's going to actually say, okay, I'm going to open it up, or are they going to wait to the finish? And, but like you said, no matter where they are in the race, Bacali figures out, I know how to get this done. 257 for that first kilometer by their standards this is slow somebody needs to grab this race by the scruff of the neck Gurma leads he has been so close to tasting glory on so many occasions but now Conceslas Kipruto comes to the front this is a guy who's won it all, a world youth champion, a world junior champion. He's the reigning world champion and won the first of his two world titles in London five years ago. Car crash at the end of 2018. He's had all sorts going on in his life off the track, but he looks like he's approaching, approaching his best form, tucked in on the inside. He looked really comfortable. He was exchanging words in Swahili with Hilary Ball at the end of the semi-finals or heats or whatever you want to call them and they're talking to each other again now on the inside behind Lamet behind Lamet Chagurma. and still no move from Sufain El Bacali who is buried in the middle of the pack as Baladi of France now comes up to try and turn this into a bit of an honest pace and Conceslas Capruto has gone to the front but he hasn't gone to the front to turn it on he's just making sure he gets a clean look at the barrier and the longer it stays like this, the likelier it is that we're going to see a massive burn-up from El Bacali, who is just in the middle of the pack to the left of Evan Jaeger. It's very tight. That last 500 metres when we get there is going to be something epic. The Kibuto is still in the front. Kirma's coming back. Wale's deciding that he's going to take it. Kibuto's in the front so he can say clear of the water jump. Exchanging a bit of words with Bore. Bore. And here comes Martos on the outside. They're pushing and shoving, a little bit of elbowing. Coming round now with three laps to go. Second attempt, 2.35. Barsham's got clean at the first time of asking. Oh, wow. What a final in prospect. What a climax we're going to have. He's still dancing. Now we're back with the steeplechase. Two and a half laps to go. Martos hitting the front. Little, little tap in the back there from Bolhardi. This is always the danger when it gets tight towards the end we don't want to see any fallers here what an end to this race in prospect does it begin to play into the hands of Soufane El Bacali I think it does but who else could launch a mammoth sprint here is anyone going to go with half a mile remaining I promise you we're in for an epic climax here Nobody's been prepared to commit just yet. When will the big move come? And who will it be? Bacali is almost running wide into lane three. Now he needs to get slightly closer to the front because, oh, there's a faller there. That's always going to happen when it's so tight. El Bacali needs to pay close attention here because if somebody suddenly bursts, they get the edge. If you go first, and get five meters and then you both run at exactly the same speed to the end 
That early acceleration can make the difference. And it was Beck, the world junior silver medalist, who fell. Such a shame for him. Wale has a little look across. And Miley Selassie is there. Kibuto and Gore keep nudging at each other. Miley Selassie leading. Now Sufain El Bakali coming up towards the shoulder of Concessless Capruto, who is the reigning champion. They take the bell in the final of the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. It's been ever so cagey all the way through. Wale and Amare, no move yet from Germa. The two outstanding performers this season have a little bit to do. What a story this will be for Haile Selassie. He was fifth in Tokyo. Amare tried to come through on the inside and he manages it somehow. Wale leads. Concessus Di Bruto coming up on the outside. And another faller. It was Amare in that field. Gerber coming up onto El Bacali's shoulder. But El Bacali floats across the front. Now comes the acceleration. Kipruto is the defending champion. Germa, silver in Doha, silver in Tokyo. Can he somehow wrestle the gold away from Bikali? No, he can't. El Bikali becomes the first non-Kenyan to hold the world title as well as the Olympic title. And the silver goes to Germa once again. And Conceslas Kipruto makes it yet another medal coming back to form. He's on the podium with the bronze. But that race played into the hands of the Moroccan. The longer they left it, the better his chances of burning them up. And he did so. And in the end, he had room to spare. What a victory. And what a performance from Soufane El Bakali. The winning habit from Tokyo has followed him here to Eugene. <laughs> There's another dancer for you. How do you beat a man who can run 3.31 for 1,500 metres with a beautiful hurdling technique? And we had two fallers in that race. It was bound to happen because it was so, so slow and bunched. Soufane El Bacali will embark on a lap of honour. What's he doing now? Here we go. Okay, flag over the legs. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, I like that. Yeah, playing the playing the air guitar. When you're the champion, you can do what you like. Yeah. I hope Germa is pleased with that effort. I mean, what's he got to do to win a gold? It's yet another brilliant performance from him. But you get the feeling with him, he's got to go early.